Hi all, so this morning I'm going to show you how to move letters around when you've typed out a word. And as you can see here, I've typed out um, anti-crafty words with the Amarillo font. You can see up here, this is, I'm just going to highlight my mouse for you. That's the Amarillo font that I've chosen. If you want to choose a different font, just go back, once the words are clicked, go back to here. You can type in the name of your font that you'd like to use, um, or you can scroll up and down through your list. Uh, for now, we're going to leave it at this one. So there's a few ways you can space your words out so that the letters are touching, because cursive fonts are meant to be attached. They're not meant to look like this. So those of you who are leaving your fonts looking like this uh, apart, um, if that's the look you're going for, okay, but it's not, the font is not meant to look this way, or most fonts aren't anyways. So what you can do is, once the uh, text is highlighted, there's this letter space kerning area. I'm going to highlight my, this right in here. So you can just touch the, click on the, the down arrow. And what that does is it slowly brings the font letters together. Now I usually manually do it. Um, once it starts grouping some together because I like the way this looks here um, but I do need if I'm if I continue going what's going to happen is it's going to start making this tight while it's trying to bring these in and the same thing's going to happen here as well so I'm going to go back out of just a tad because oh, I'm going to go in one because I like the way this is touching um, and then I can do them manually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the upper right I'll show you my mouse again where I am and I'm going to go to ungroup and we're going to click that. So what that just did was it separated each and every letter. So now I can click on each letter and, and move it slightly. I can use my arrow keys once I've clicked on each letter. I can move it with my arrow keys to make sure that it's exactly the same height or I can use it manually with my mouse. So I like the way that looks. So I'm going to highlight that word alone. And I'm going to go to the bottom, I'm going to hit attach, just because I do like that word and I don't want it moving. Next I'm going to go to this word, and I'm going to move that R over just slightly so it's lined up properly with that line. And I'm going to move the A over just slightly, and I'm just going to move every letter over until it's just the way I like it. So that looks good as well. So I'm going to group that together and I'm going to hit attach as well down on the bottom right. Here goes my mouse so you can see that. So now I want to take this and just move it ever so slightly over. Yeah, I like the way that looks so I'm going to grab them both now and now I'm going to attach both. Now when I'm cutting this out, in the case that I would be cutting this out, I need to weld it. If I don't weld it, each letter uh, overlap I know you won't see it here, but you will see it uh, later when it's cut. You're going to see a little area here that's been cut out for that. We want each word to be cut as one uniform word with any, any cut lines in it. So we need to weld it. So that's on your bottom right, and that's your weld right down there. So we're going to hit weld. So it's going to flash, and it's going to, sh it's going to go off for a second, and then go come back up. You know it's welded because you're no longer, to hit, you're no longer able to click weld. So that's for the first one. I'm going to show you something that happens once in a while. When you've typed, I've just typed this word out uh, in another font. And I'm going to show you what happens sometimes when I've, when you've finished attaching all your letters and you like the way they look, and then you go to hit weld. So this is typed out. Look at, yeah, that looks fine. I'm going to go and hit my weld key. Oh no. Look what's happened. It's filled in that E. Okay, no worries. What you do is you go to your upper left hand corner and hit undo. So now that undo has been clicked, it reverses the weld that you did. And we know that because the weld button, we're able to click it again. So we know that this is no longer welded. So what we need to do is we need to un, uh, so detach or ungroup. If ungroup isn't available because it's already been attached, 
during the weld process, what we're going to do is we're going to hit detach, which is down here. So this will allow us to detach those letters and move them ever so slightly. Now I'm going to move this E over just a little bit because that, that was the, the problem I'm guessing. So I'm going to highlight this word again and then I'm going to hit weld. I can hit attach first. It's not necessary if I'm welding because they are attached when I weld. So let's just hit weld this time. And there we go. So we know now that it's not, it's been welded because the weld is no longer able to be clipped and that E has been hollowed out again the way it should look, okay? Now sometimes just by um, bringing up the actual size of the word on the screen and then hitting weld, that can also work. But if you're still getting letters or areas filled in, then I suggest you uh, ungroup or uh, detach. Undo your weld, ungroup or detach, move those letters uh, just slightly out from each other and then try welding again and that will solve the problem. Now, once everything is saved, you'll actually, I'm gonna to pretend to save this. I'm just gonna name it sample. Okay, because in the old days, we weren't able to see what fonts we used once something was welded and saved. Um, if you didn't weld it, no problem, it would show you the fonts used. N now you can actually, there's an area where you can view it. So what I'm going to do is, it's not showing me my, it's not giving me the option now to go, because it's been saved, it's not giving me the option to uh, look at the information uh, just by looking on my right panel, because usually it would have said, this is Amarillo font, this is the MFI Love Glitter font, it would have given me that information. So what it does now though, there is a little area that you can go on to to see that. So I'm just going to check this one. So I'm going to go to um, this. This is the one that's been highlighted in the gray, which means that's the one I've clicked on. So if I go to the color panel, it's going to ask me, you know, do you want to change the colors of this? No, I don't. I want to see the image information. This is what I want to see here. This, by clicking on it, will show me selected font is Amarillo. And if I go to this one, this is the gray area that's been highlighted. I'm going to go to here and I'm going to do the same thing. And it's going to say MF I Love Glitter font. So those are the fonts that I've used for each of those words that have been welded. And I can check back and look to see what it is. Because um, there was nothing worse way back when when we weren't able to do that. So those of you who don't know those areas and where they are, that's where you can look. Just go into the image information um, on that side panel and you're good to go. Have any questions, please direct them to my Facebook group. Um, the link will be provided at the end of this video. Um, as well, if you have questions, just post them below in the video comments. Thanks for watching. Talk soon.